All right, we are back on our project. And immediately, what we're going to do is to go on the layout. I'm going to let everything like this. And what I would like to do before working on a context or whatever to externalize, externalize all of this is to create a first component. And this component, it's going to be my sidebar. So basically, I will have a sidebar, a header, and then I will have also um, a body where I'm going to display all the children. So for now, until the moment I decide to work on the authentication and on the context or whatever, I would like to put some skeleton to my application. So I'm going to create immediately a sidebar.tsx component and I'm going to use here sidebar here with hello and I'm going to call it sidebar. Okay, so I got this sidebar right now and I'm going to come back to the layout and I'm going to put my sidebar just here. So we can see that we can import the sidebar and if I come back to the project, I'm going to update. We can see that I got the sidebar and the button that is here. Okay, so at first, uh, what I would like to do is to just work on the size of the element. So basically, my sidebar here, it's going to take by default 300 pixels. Okay, so I will have my sidebar with 300 pixels and I would like to have a border on the right. Okay, so basically I'm going to add this and if I come back, we can see that we've got this border. Uh, we don't see it that much, but it's good. And I would like to have a min 8, which will be actually min 8 screen. Okay, so we've got this and the problem is that down here we can see that we've got here click me, which is supposed to be on the right. So what we would like to do here is to, we can keep this uh, here, this class name here, inter class name. And here I would like to have my sidebar and my children next to each other. So I'm going to use flex, item center and justify between. So when I come back to my app, we can see that my button is totally on the right and then my sidebar on the left. So what I want to do here is to wrap my children here. There we go here. And then I would like to have as a class name here with full eight full. That's what I want to have. So when I come back, we can see that we have here the button that is on the middle. So it's not actually item center, but it's item start. And when I come back, there we go. That's what we want. We will see later that this sidebar will need to be fixed, but we are going to come back on this. Okay, so now that I get this, I'm going to come back to the sidebar and I'm going to focus exclusively on the sidebar for this uh, course. So this sidebar has for now a width of 300 pixels, a border here and a min H screen. I'm going to add some padding to it. And here I'm going to add a padding four to start. And let's have a look. We can see that we've got the uh, sidebar moving in here. So I'm going to inspect this element. And here we can see that we've got the padding four that has been added here and we are good. Okay, so 300 pixels, let's take a look at it. It actually doesn't take exactly 300 pixels. That's the thing because here we have a 206. That's a problem. That's not what we would like to have. So basically padding four, it means here, and I'm going to zoom a little bit because otherwise you're not going to see it. Padding four, it means 16 pixels. So if I go to padding one here, it's going to be actually nothing. One, it's going to be four pixels. So one is four pixels, two, it's eight pixels, three, it's 12 pixels, etc., etc. So I'm going to keep on padding four to be on 16 pixels. And we can see here that it's supposed to be 300 pixels, but it's not. So let's have a look at it. It's 259. So I'm going to take min width and here, 300 pixels. So I can add this and suddenly we have the real size. We have 300 pixels here that has been deployed. Okay, so we've got the sidebar here and what we would like to have in this sidebar, it's three parts. I'm going to explain. So I'm going to have here the user part. Then we want to have the menu. So I'm going to add the menu. And at the end, we want to have something like settings or probably notifications or whatever. 
Okay, so we arrive here and we've got these three elements. However, we would like the menu to take all the A8 and the settings and notification at the bottom. So what I can do here is to use flex, flex call. So I put some flex between my elements. And here on the menu, I can add a class and this class is going to be grow. So suddenly we can see that menu take all the eight and is pushing actually the uh, settings and notification to the bottom. Okay, so suddenly we can see the menu is taking all the eight and I'm going to add probably some background to see it. We can see that menu is taking all the eight with settings and notification. So that's what I want because here I'm going to have a lot of items. So I'm going to come back. I'm just going to remove that. And let's focus now on this user part. And on this user part, I want to create a new component, a basic component here that I'm going just to make myself. So it's going to be user item dot tsx. Okay, this user item here is going to be a user item that I'm going to use for every user of the application. So I'm going to type user item here and I'm going to add this user item in here. Okay, so here we've got our uh, element coming from user item. So when I come back, I got user item on the top here. So let's go, let's work on this user item. So here, let's say that at first the user item is going to have a first name, let's say uh, Guillaume Durand, and then a, um, let's say an at code with Guillaume or more, probably more the email. So we are going to come back in here and it's going to be code with uh, Guillaume at gmail.com. There we go. So when the user will be logged in, we will have these two elements. Something that we can do immediately is to add an avatar exactly like Shad. <laughs> so Shad CN. Uh, as a Twitter account, you can go on it. He got exactly this avatar. And we can add this code and we can ask him um, actually to, to the UI to add this avatar component. Me, I'm not going to use it because later I will try to create the same one. So the first here lesson that I'm going to show you is to reproduce the code of Chatien, but later, just after this one, we are going to use all the time the component. Okay, this one is just an exception. So here I'm actually I'm going to put that into a div. And here I'm going to use here a div called avatar. Okay, so this avatar here will be rounded full at first, will have some eight. So remember here, we can add some size. So if I had um, actually eight, uh, yes, there we go. And here I'm going to have BG green or BG emerald 500, emerald 500 here, we should be good. So when I come back, I got this little round here. I'm going to add probably some width. There we go. We have this little round and inside what I would like to have is the initials of the actual um, here. So GD with a text white. OK, and a font of 700 if we can. And we, when we come back, there we go. So I'm going to zoom a little bit. So we got this and I'm going to flex item center justify center. And it's always the same. So we've got this element here. We are going to wrap them next to each other. So I can go back here on the top, use flex item center, justify center, and I want to have a gap of two. And suddenly we've got these two items here, but we've got a problem. We can see here that we don't take exactly the mean width and mean weight. So I'm going to use mean width and mean height, and we should be good. Okay, that's the first step. We are going to continue. Here, what I'm going to do is to add a, a border and I would like it to be rounded and I would like it to be rounded 32 pixels. So 32 pixels is probably too much. I'm going to add 16. And if I show you this now, it's because you can use the system of Tailwind um, with the numbers or you can use between brackets the numbers that you want. So here, if I use rounded eight, we can see that it doesn't work because here it's supposed to work with Excel, LG, etc. So here I'm going to use actually my own and I think it's going to be 12 pixels. 12 pixels, it's a bit too much. I'm going to add 
8 and we should be good. Then I'm going to add some padding into this. So I'm going to type P and here I can add P4 and if I come back, we can see this. So we can see that we've got a big problem in here. First, we've got um, probably some too much padding on the top and we've got those elements that are too big. So I'm going to lower them. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to type text, 16 pixels. And here I would like to add font bolt, which I can use also. So when I come back, we've got it in here. And here I'm going to type class, text, 12 pixels. And I'm going to add a text, neutral, 500. So as you can see, every time I type, um, I actually use IntelliSense of Tailwind CSS. So if I go to IntelliSense Tailwind CSS under VS Code, we can see that it helps me to actually find the colors of Tailwind. I'm not obliged to use them. We're going to see after there is also a package for Chatien. Okay, so we've got this. I'm going to come back and suddenly it's a bit clearer. So I'm going to just stay on 100% and unzoom directly from here. We can see that we've got too much padding. So I'm going to remove this, I'm going to get back. And if I go here, we can see that I got a PX2 that I can add on the size and actually a P2 on every size. And suddenly we've got our element here, which looks really nice. I'm just going to lower the size of the, this rounded element or probably put it on 10. So I'm going to go back here on 10 and we should be good. Here we put justify center, but I'm going to add justify between. And again, with that, I can use grow directly. And when I come back, we've got something really nice for the moment. Another thing is that we can see that there is no gap between here the user element and the menu. So if I come back here on my sidebar, what I can do here, I can see that I got flex and flex call. So I can use gap here, gap two or gap four to put some space between my elements. So if I inspect immediately, we can see here that we've got these yellow lines and those yellow lines are showing me the gap between the element and it's more clear. Okay, this was the first element. We are going to continue to add a menu to our sidebar.